Bob, first off, thanks for doing this specifically for A's fans. I know you've had a busy afternoon speaking to the San Diego media, but here in Oakland, I mean, all of the all of this is really still sinking in. It happened so fast late last week. A lot of people were caught by surprise. I mean, you were under contract for next season. You said you were happy here. And I know you can't get into all the details, but clearly the A's allowed other organizations to, you know, gain the permission to speak with you. That happened. You signed with the Padres. What little bits in between, what missing links can you maybe help us fill in to like actually grasp what happened? Well, I, you know, I'm still kind of grasp, trying to grasp it too. You know, I, I, you know, I was there a long time and, you know, it's for a guy that grew up in the Bay area and watched this team and, finally got to manage it and manage it for a long period of time that that's about as much of a dream come true as you can get but there's probably a shelf life to everything and you know to think that you know i was going to manage the my entire career there you you obviously hope that but how long how often does that happen and you know you see tony la Russa, you know left oakland and went to St. Louis. Now he's managed in Chicago. It's just very rare that you see a Cal Ripken in, you know, in any space uh, in, in baseball. It just doesn't happen very, very often. So the, the odds probably were at some point in time. And I think, you know, and I can't, I can't forecast where, where the A's are going to go and what they're going to do. I know that I've been through a few cycles there. There are limitations. You know, there is, there has been talk about what the team needs to do, not only now, but in the future. Um, there are restrictions of how things can go in Oakland. And, you know, and then when there's a conversation and, and you're allowed, you know, you, someone calls on you and you get a chance to go somewhere else and you have a conversation, you know, things, sometimes things transpire. My, what I really want to, to get across is, is, I loved every minute uh, of managing the Oakland A's in, in in my hometown with a coaching staff that I was with around a long time with a front office that was so empowering for me and and allowed me, you know, to to manage there through thick and thin. I mean, it wasn't always great. We had a, a period in the middle there that that wasn't great and they stuck with me. Yep. You would think there'd ever been a time that maybe I go somewhere else. It was probably then. So I don't know why and how I think things happen for a reason sometimes, but uh, it doesn't diminish the fact or make me feel any different about the Oakland A's and my time there. It doesn't make me think any differently or feel any differently about ownership. Ownership employed me there for 11 years. You know, the front office stuck with me for 11 years. The fans were absolutely fantastic. The media was sensational to me my entire time there. The players that we had there, I mean, everything revolves around the players and, you know, the success that you have or that you look at me and that I had was because of the players. So I, I more look at this right now as you just sometimes your time's up and, and, you know, they're just, there's times that you just end up somewhere else. Simple clarification is something I saw out there. I didn't put much stock in this, but you you did not seek this out. You were offered this opportunity and you considered it and you went with it, right? To be clear. Yeah. 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 No, I, I mean, I, it was, I was shocked when I'm, when Billy called me, I was, <laughs> I, I thought he was kidding for a minute. So. <laughs> Which he might do sometimes, right? Like. Oh, well, no doubt. So. No doubt. But, but in that situation, Bob, and I, and I know, I know how you are as a, as a, as a very decent human being, you must have been in the personal dilemma of a lifetime for all the things that you just said, for all your connections and time with Oakland and Palo Alto is where you were born and Cal is where you went to college and, and like you literally were green and gold, um, knowing all that, but also understanding the opportunity that you were able to say yes to. I mean, this must have been how difficult of a decision for you and your family to actually make. It was hard, but, you know, it was one that just just based on everything that all the variables that I had to decide on. Uh, ended up being the thing to do. It was, you know, I, it was three years here. It was one year in Oakland. 
Uh, you had to kind of think where was the next, where was the next level that Oakland was going to go? What was going to happen in, in the off season? I don't know. I, 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 but I have to think about that when you make a decision like this. So, you know, I, I, nobody should, you should, nobody should come down on anybody for, for this transpiring. And I really, I appreciate the fact that Billy actually came to me and said, here's an opportunity. What do you want to do with it? That John Fisher said, here's an opportunity. What do you want to do with it? So I harbor nothing against anything Oakland. Um, and I'm also, I also like the fact that, that it's a good team still there. I'm not running out on a, on a bad team. And when I had our conversations, when I had conversations with our guys in Oakland, I cring, kind of was cringing like, did I let them down? And to a man, they said, look, this is a business. If, if we were posed with the same you know, situation, sure. We're going to, you yeah. know, it, it's a business. You get a, you get an opportunity somewhere else. You get more length to it. Uh, it's just the way it is. I mean, at some point in time, Chris Bassett's not going to be there. He's going to be a free agent. And if a, a better opportunity or a different opportunity that appeals to him uh, comes about, then that's the way baseball is. So I'm trying to compare it to, to other, you know, like a player going somewhere sure. else to via free agency or whatever. So um is it hard sure because i was there for a long period of time does it feel different yeah it feels it feels way different but you know it's just it's just kind of where it is right now this news broke on thursday which if i'm correct was your 60th birthday you had to bring that up didn't you well not the age part but i mean just like all of this chaos begins on your birthday and i i know i was a part of it like bomel what's going on here but how many phone calls and text messages do you think have gone through your phone in the last five days? Estimate. Yeah, well, originally, just when it was reported that, you know, the rumor was out there that I was going to San Diego, uh, I told Kelly and Lexi, I think it was uh, 175 or 180 texts. <laughs> um, I think it was 65 voicemails Jeez. and more calls that weren't voicemails. And you know me, I'm OCD. I don't like this stuff sitting on my phone. I'm trying to get back to them as soon as I can. And I'm getting all stressed out and had to put the phone down for a while because I was getting too stressed. Um, You're a good man. Just, You're a good man. No, it just means that the, how how much I, how, how important it, me, it was to me, Oak, my time in Oakland yeah. was more than anything else. I know one of the people that reached out to you is Warriors head coach Steve Kerr. And I know you've got a lot of relationship with, you know, high level um uh, other colleagues in the professional sports world, what advice, what sage, sage advice did he give you? Or who's somebody else that said something that stuck with you about all of this, you know, earth shattering news? Well, I mean, a lot. I mean, Phil Garner, I'm wearing number three again for Phil Garner. I saw that. Even if, even if six wasn't available, it was available here. I couldn't wear six here. Yeah. I mean, it was Sal Bando. Yeah. That's the sole reason I did that. So it was, it was easy to, to go back to Phil's number. Uh, you know, Steve was just, Steve was just great. He said, look, this, you know, it's been a fantastic opportunity. It's a, a team that's, a, you know, looks to be at a, almost like a crescendo. Right. And, you know, when we were there in, in, you know, early in the season, I've said here today, you know, 40,000 people on Tuesday night, they're going crazy. Even our guys were looking around going, this is awesome. And I'm not comparing anything. I'm all I'm doing is saying what, the experience was here, which is, is kind of part of what, you know, played into it. But man, you know, Oakland fans, the ones that, that show up and are out there. And I've also said 10 feels like 20, 12, 20 feels like 40. When they got a full house, it's, it's as lively a crowd as you're ever going to see. So, um, you know, it's, it's more just kind of is what it is, unfortunately, and I'm in a different place, but man, do I value my time in Oakland? Do I, yeah. I thank everybody dearly because, you know, it, it, it didn't have, it, it didn't last that long just because of me. There were a lot of people, fans, media, ownership, coaches, players that extend, extended that, uh, time in Oakland for me. Well, it's not like I needed to do any research on you, Bob, but I obviously have been texting with some of your players and just kind of, you know, gauging their thoughts and comments. And I I don't want to be too specific, but I mean, there's almost um, 
a condolence being sent sent around from player to player, like you know, realizing what what you meant to the team and what now is not going to be around. Chris Bassett tweeted this. I'll read it. As Doctor Sue says. Don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. Ten plus years in Oakland was able to call Bo Mel their manager. He's truly the best in the sport. Be grateful. I sure as hell am. And to your point earlier, I know they all they all understand this. Like this is a business. Um, were were there personal moments though? Because I I know these are not just employees with you. These are a lot of your friends too. Yeah, like I said, when I made some calls, I was you know kind of a little worried and. You know, Murph Murph summed it up to me too. No hard feelings. We understand. Yeah. So I appreciate that. And all the, you know, the guys that like bass with what he says and, you know, what he, what he says about me, he's done more for my career than I've done for his. So <laughs> the, the, the easy response for me to them always is, hey, the feeling's mutual. He also says Dave Stewart is his favorite A's pitcher of all time. So I, I obviously question C. Bass's judgment right there. Like, I'm going to call <laughs> to call him out on that one. Uh, Bo- I heard from Stu, too. Of course. From- I'm sure yeah. you've heard from so many people. Um, there's also, and I don't normally take like a, a, a viewer email here, but somebody said, on a scale of one to thank God, how happy are you not to have to see Dallas Braden's face interviewing you every Friday night during games? Oh, wait a second. That was from Dallas Braden. Um, <laughs> let, let's put it this way. It was it was uh, more palatable during COVID. Yeah, all right. The distancing, right? Yeah. You don't want to get too close to that beard. Hey, um, just a couple things left and, and A's related. I kind of want to just focus on that at the, at the very end of this. Um, you've got the most Oakland wins managed under your belt. And I'm not going to ask you like what season was your favorite and although the last couple have been very special and the group you have has been awesome, from the outside looking in, I, I would probably guess that 2012 and what unfolded there is is maybe the one that you keep on top of your list. 12 and 17 were probably the yeah. you know, the years that, you know, the the unexpected happened. That 12 is when a miracle happened. Yeah. I mean, you know, we were in first place for, we weren't in first place for any time during the season. Until the last game. The yeah. After the last game. Yeah in first place and to the the fans there uh, that particular day i've never seen anything like that yeah i, I mean that that's that's you know serious postseason stuff that you know that only Oak, oakland fans can do really yeah. you know in, in in a regular season game uh neither you nor i will be hiring the next ace manager so what does it matter what we say here? But but I, I want to throw this out there as a thought, and I don't know how comfortable you are to talk about this because these are your colleagues and friends, but I, I truly hope that it that the next day's manager is somebody that has rubbed shoulders with you over the years, and whether it is a Ryan Christensen, a Mark Kotze, or even from the outside, a Ron Washington, who's been around the team for several different stints. I, I just hope that it's somebody like that, familiar with the group, and somebody who understands how you had success there. Do you have any perspectives on that? Yeah. All those guys that you talked about, even Darren Bush was a a manager in our system for a long time. So they are in good hands. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't create that whole thing. Our staff did. It's never been about me. It's been about the entire group and that coaching staff's been there for a while. They are in good hands. And as it stands right now, they have a really good team too. So I feel really good about that. The fact that almost everything's still in place there and Billy and David are running the show and, yeah. and that's that that has carries more weight than me being the manager is 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 Billy Bean being you know running the show he did it long before me he's going to do it after me and and he more than anybody else um is the constant in Oakland but that would be your hope right is it somebody like I said somebody either on the inside or very close to it is the next guy to be in the dugout. Correct. Now they're forward thinkers, so they're going to probably think outside the box sure. too, but they, they cannot make a bad, a bad decision amongst the guys that we just talked about. Are you saying Stephen Vogt is ready to manage a baseball team? team a little bit longer. I saw him in the dugout the other day. Still, <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Still in the dugout. Too so close. You got a little time before that. Don't sleep on Chad Pinner when his oh, career is over too. I've already told him that. Yeah. I said he's next some someday. I don't want to rush him. But uh, hey, look, you've managed seven different playoff teams in Major League Baseball. The Padres as a franchise since 1969 have only been to the postseason six times. I know what you've got. I know that's one of the reasons you took this job, the players, the potential. 
isn't it very cut and dry what you've been brought in to do, like literally starting next season in San Diego? Yeah, no pressure there at all. <laughs> I mean, start to go to the playoffs first and then go all the way next, right? That's what was attractive. That was as attractive as thing. And they have really good people here too. I mean, it's they're not making wholesale changes here. They're just bringing in a guy that, you know, that is going to manage the team with, with all the really important pieces still in place. You know, there's going to be some, a few coaching uh, staff changes, but that exciting baseball team that we've seen the last couple of years is still there and they're hungry to win. And, you know, that was a really attractive part of this. You know, and I thought what really stood out was one of the Padres players said in, in an interview over this weekend, uh, the name Melvin itself carries a lot of weight. Um, so the guys down there, they know exactly what they're getting. Bob, let Are me talking about your dog, Brody? Well, Are okay. They... So I was going to yeah. close it out and you, it's almost like you knew what was next. Um, can, can I do a little lightning round with you? Sure. Um, our dog, our family dog, named Melvin. Do I have to change his name to Baxter, as in Anchorman, as in the whole San Diego thing? Do I have to change Melvin's name now because of you? That would hurt my heart. <laughs> that would hurt my heart. Yeah, it's no, not going to happen. I hope that's not the case. Our son Max, already. I think Max would have a yeah, problem. Yeah, I was going to say, he already said yeah. it's not going to happen. Um, last year, and I know you count this, you actually got ejected from six games last year, which was a career high for you. More or less next year with the Padres. This is lightning round, isn't it? <laughs> yes. All right. Instinctively, about the same. All right, all right. And then uh, what was what was my last one here? Uh, oh, I, I I know this one. Um, looking at the geography of places you've managed between Arizona, Seattle, Oakland, and now San Diego, is it true that you're just not a good manager east of the Rocky Mountains? <laughs> I've never been given the opportunity, <laughs> so we don't know. You're a West Coast guy. No, it really it really works. Correct. Hey, uh, Bob, look, thank you so much. I mean, look, you know I always appreciate your time. I always look forward to our conversations. I'm sad to understand that they won't be as frequent anymore. I want to thank you for being kind to everybody in our business, the fans, how gracious you were over the years in Oakland. And um, before I start to get emotional, I'll say goodbye, but also thank you so much um, there are some huge cleats to fill. Well, look, it, it, the feeling is mutual across the board. And my time there, I, I, you know, it's, it, it flew by. It yeah. literally yeah. flew by. And, you know, it's, it, it, you know it, a decade. How long do you get to do that for a decade yeah. with a team that you, you, know, you grew up in and watched and got to manage. So maybe that's all the 60, the 10, maybe it's a round number thing that, that's kind of maybe the time's over. Bob, I, I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Brody. Thank you. Everything that you've done for me, the media in, in the Bay Area has been so supportive of me and, and uh, I'll never forget that. 